This question is about zinc and compounds of zinc. A student produces pure crystals of zinc chloride by reacting zinc oxide with hydrochloric acid. The equation for the reaction is zinc oxide, ZnO, and that's in the solid state, reacts with two hydrochloric acid in the aqueous state, so that means the acid will be a solution, and this turns into zinc chloride, that's our target crystals, and they are aqueous, and we also produce water, which is in the liquid state. The student adds zinc oxide to the hydrochloric acid until the zinc oxide is in excess. And excess means that there is more than we need and there will be some left over. And give one observation that the student could make to show that the zinc oxide is in excess. Well, when the student adds the solid zinc oxide to the hydrochloric acid and then stirs it, that zinc oxide solid will react. And so the solid will no longer be visible. It will be as if the solid has disappeared, but actually it will have reacted. And then they add some more, stir that, and that will react and disappear as well. And they keep going and going and going. And they will know that the zinc oxide is in excess if there is some solid remaining at the bottom of the beaker. Or we might say that the solid is no longer disappearing. And so that's what we could say, either of those, for this first mark. In part B, why is excess zinc oxide used rather than excess hydrochloric acid? And this comes down to the state symbols. The zinc oxide is a solid and the hydrochloric acid is aqueous. And the zinc chloride crystals that we are trying to produce is also aqueous. And our choice of chemical for the excess comes down to how easy it will be to remove that excess chemical once the reaction has finished. And if our excess is a solid, like zinc oxide is, it can be filtered out. And so the excess zinc oxide would be caught in the top of the filter paper as a residue and the zinc chloride solution would collect as a filtrate in the conical flask. And that separation is going to be very easy. And so we could say that the zinc oxide can be filtered off. That would get us the mark. Or we might say that it is easier to remove or separate the zinc oxide. Or we could have the converse and say it is harder to remove the excess hydrochloric acid. As a follow-on for the same reaction, we are asked to name one other compound that the student could add to hydrochloric acid to produce zinc chloride. Well, some things that will react with acids to make salt are metals, metal oxides, metal hydroxides, and metal carbonates. So as a starting point, we've got a list of four possible chemicals. Now, we've been told that we are selecting a compound, so that rules out the metal option on this occasion, and we've been asked to name an other compound, and so we're already adding zinc oxide, so that rules out the oxides for our options. And so we could use a metal hydroxide or a metal carbonate. And since we're adding it to hydrochloric acid to produce zinc chloride, we could choose zinc hydroxide or zinc carbonate. Either of those is fine for our one mark. And then in part D, we're told that we need to describe how the student could obtain crystals of zinc chloride from the solution of zinc chloride dissolved in water that we would have at the end of the reaction. And this has two stages. First of all, we need to heat our solution until crystals start to form. And we would probably do that over a water bath rather than heating the solution directly. Or for this first mark, we could say heat the solution to reduce the volume or to evaporate some of the water. Or maybe we might say heat until the crystallization point has been reached. Any of those three options is fine for this first mark. 
And then our second mark is for saying that we would turn off the heat, we would take our solution and we would leave it to cool or leave it to crystallise. That would get us our second marking point. Zinc chloride is produced in a displacement reaction between zinc and copper chloride solution. And the equation for the reaction is shown here. Zn, which is the zinc, is reacting with our copper chloride and we are producing zinc chloride and copper. And we've been commanded to complete the ionic equation for this reaction. Ionic equations simplify the overall equation by getting rid of those chemicals from ionic compounds that are not changed during the reaction. And so generally there are fewer chemicals in an ionic equation. And we've got part of the equation already begun. We have the zinc atoms as reactants turning into zinc ions in the 2 plus charge. And so what's not mentioned here at all is the copper chloride and the element copper. And I suggest we start with the element copper. Since it is not an ion and not an ionic compound, the copper will be unchanged for the ionic equation. And so we can just write the symbol for copper in this space here. And then when we tackle the ionic compound, copper chloride, we can treat this in a similar way to the zinc chloride. Copper chloride is an ionic compound, and we know that chloride comes from chlorine, which is in group 7, so those chloride ions will have a 1 minus charge, and we know that there will be two of them. And the copper will be a positive ion since it is a metal and also since it's cancelling out the negative chloride ions. But since there are two negative one chloride ions, the copper will need to be a two plus ion. And that's what we need to put into this space here. Copper two plus charge. And we can see for the ionic equation, the chloride ions are removed because they are not changing. And then we've been asked, why is zinc described as being oxidised in this reaction? Well, in terms of electrons, the acronym oil rig is quite useful because this helps us to remember that oxidation is the loss of electrons and reduction is gain. And since the zinc has gone from atoms of zinc with no charge to zinc ions with a positive charge, this means that the zinc atoms are losing two electrons. But actually, it would be OK to just say zinc loses electrons.